uh, I would just like to introduce our eminent speaker for the day, Dr. Kenneth Chukuba. Dr. Kenneth has been with Southwest Minnesota State University since 2016, where he serves as an assistant professor in the management department. He received his PhD in management with a concentration in leadership and organizational change from Walden University in Minnesota, MBA from Webster University, Missouri, and BS from Columbia College, Missouri. Dr. Kenneth also completed coursework in disruptive strategy at Harvard Business School and interculturally speaking from Oxford University. His areas of specialization are strategic management, leadership, and organizational change international business and international management. He serves on the advisory board for DECA, Distributive Education College of America, as vice chair. Dr. Kenneth belongs to the following academic and professional organizations and serves as a reviewer. Academic of Management, Midwest Academy of Management, the Southern Management Association, and Society for Advancement of Management. Before arriving at Southwest, Southwest Minnesota University, Dr. Kenneth was a visiting professor at the Waldorf University of Forest City, Loa. His research interests are in the areas of strategic management, international business, and organizational leadership. So, we welcome you to, to today's session. Now, I would, okay. now I would start presenting your slides. Just let me know okay. when you can see your slides. Okay. I have not seen it yet. Is it is it visible now? Yes, it's visible. Okay, okay just let thank me you for that. Change. Yeah, sure, it's visible. Thank you for that introduction. I welcome everybody to this third day section of International Certificate Program on Human Resources for Management for Excellence. So before I start, I would like to do a little housekeeping. I can see the Slides again, the class is gone. Hello, can you see me? Okay. So a little housekeeping. So what I would do, um, before we start, if you need to ask me any question, you can type it on this, on the chat, and then um, Professor uh, Smaraki will can read it to me. So I will start by reviewing our agenda. Can you go to slice two? Slice two. Okay, the agenda today is um, we are going to discuss what is uh, motivation. Discuss what is the types of motivation and we also have a discussion on the key concepts of in intrinsic uh, motivation. The techniques that organizational managers can use to establish intrinsic motivation. Also, we also discuss what is uh, uh, the importance of motivation. How can uh, one person motivate another? We also have a discussion on how to determine what motivates an employee. And then have a discussion on ways to improve performance in an organization. And then we go to the expansion uh, theory, and then we have a conclusion. Then we have a section for questions and answers. So slide three. So what is uh, what is motivation? Can anyone t share with me what is motivation? Anyone? Okay, for me, uh, motivation is a force that energizes, directs, and sustains a person's effort. More specifically, motivation are inner drives that occur within within an individual in addition you can say these drives will cause a person to satisfy needs and uh, fulfill their goals three four okay so there are two types of motivation we have eccentric motivation which is motivation that are cause cause comes from within from things or factors that are outside an individual for example 
being motivated to work hard to get a promotion or receive a social recognition, fame, or material achievements. These are an example of uh, eccentric motivation. Then the second one is intrinsic. This is a motivation that comes within the within an, within in and an individual. It comes from personal enjoyment and educational achievement that we derive from doing a particular thing. Can you move a little bit? Okay. So, for example, someone who loves to who loves music, their motivation is to practice a, an instrument or attend a class. So. It, if you yeah, okay thank you <laughs> leave that one there. so if your manager um try to motivate you intrinsically he can purchase a ticket for you to attend those classes and that's a good way to uh, motivate somebody that intrinsically can you go to the next one so the the key concepts of intrinsic motivation psychologists argue that you can only be more completely more effective if you feel autonomous and competent in what you're doing. In other words, you will only be intrinsically motivated if you feel you are competent at the tax and uh, have autonomy or control over it, over what you're doing. Thirdly, the Competent necessary for intrinsic motivation is having satisfying relationship with other at work. So techniques that can help establish intrinsic motivation. One, you need to acknowledge employee perspectives. You offer different choices for the work they do. You also need to encourage their initiative by so doing you also need to give meaningful feedback to those employees so that they know that they belong okay so go back a little bit one more okay so why is motivation important in, in an organization so one can say it is important because it helps to increase more productivity in the workplace. So when a, when, a, when an organization is increasing pro profitability, that means the organization is successful. And those employees working within are really motivated. It also helps to explain why workers or employees behave the, and perform their job the way, in certain ways. So my question to all of you here now, can one? Oh, it's gone. The slides are gone, I can't see them. Hello, I cannot see the slides again. Is it visible now? No, I don't see it. I can't see anything at all. Mr. Sanjeev Jha, can you please stop presenting? Because of you, he's, Dr. Kenneth is not able to uh, see the slides. Mr. Jha. Mr. Jha. Mr. Jha, Sanjeev Jha. Yeah, I can't see the slides again. Just a minute, sir. Okay. Just a minute, sir. Is it visible now? Uh, no, I'm not seeing it yet. No. Now? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Please continue, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, it's okay now. So, for the the particip participant, this question for you. This uh, is off again. Okay. 
my question to the participants can one person motivate another person that's my question to you can i pick somebody to answer that question for me yes sir please okay mary jane what do you think can one person motivate another person as an hr manager what do you what do you think Miss Mary Jane, please unmute yourself and you can interact with Dr. Kenneth. Yeah, Miss Mary Jane. Let me ask somebody else. How about Rabbi Kuma? Rabbi Kuma, can one person motivate another another person? Mr. Ravi Kumar? Rabbi Kuma. Are they hearing me or what? Are they not hearing me? So they would be able to hear you. Mr. Ravi Kumar, can you unmute yourself and interact? Or any other participants, participant who is interested can please unmute themselves and interact with Dr. Kenneth, please. Uh, can I answer this? Yes. Yes. Uh, you, yeah, I'm just asking. Yeah, you can answer that question. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Kenneth, I understand that uh, motivation is internal. You can inspire someone. But you cannot motivate. Uh, motivation comes from within. So you may give them the clue to get motivated, but uh, the motivation has to come from within. It's like you can take the horse to the water, you cannot make him drink the water. Mm -hmm. So you can inspire someone, but the person has to get motivated from within. That's my answer. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's that's uh, that's correct. Because to me, I say the answer is temporarily yes, but not permanently. Permanently no because you cannot uh, motivate somebody like you rightly said the motivation comes within so what motivates mr a may not motivate mr b so that's why it's different say for example mr a might want to go on a vacation with his family so if you have if you are trying to motivate him mr b and give him cash that that, is, that will, it will not satisfy him because he's not he's not interested in cash. He wants to go on a vacation with family. Then if B prefers cash, and you send him on a vacation, probably that's that's not so. That's the reason why he's not. He cannot motivate somebody. It is temporarily he can, but but permanently no, he cannot. Thank you for that question. So because motivation comes within each person and it's difficult to predict what might motivate one person is different so can somebody give me an example how you are how you motivate your employees do you ask them what they want or do you just generally motivate everybody give them whatever you feel like if you, you want to give them anyone can have a Swati, Swati, answer the question for me. Can you share? Hello. Hello. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for answering my question. Can you share? You know, how do you motivate your employees? Uh, sir, uh, there are, uh, as you know, in the theory, there are two ways: um, mm -hmm. intrinsic and extrinsic. Both the methods you can apply. Either you can give rewards, awards, something like that. Or you can go with the monetary factor like compensation, salary, work. These are the two methods generally adopted to motivate the employees in daughter. Yeah, that's good. How about uh, Mary Jane, George? How do you motivate your employees? Mary Jane. Miss Mary Jane, are you there with us? Maybe he's not there. Okay, let me. Um, how about uh, Aru and Mohanty? Mohanty, how do you motivate your employees? Mr. Aaron Mohanty? Mr. Aaron Mohanty? Participants, please get a lot. What do you say? Hello? 
Yeah, uh, Mary Jane. So, how do you motivate your employees? I know you are you are an HR manager. How do you motivate your employees? What do you do for them? How do you get them work up to do a good job? Yeah, you can. You can. Yeah. Huh? Good afternoon, everybody. You say what? Um, you can have like. Can yes. you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, you can have a session with your employees to find out what they actually want. Okay. Um, for instance, let's assume you are in an office and they need water. You can find out what they need and uh, find a way to solve that issue. That will actually stop them from maybe going out to get water or going out for lunch. So you can also agree to bring in food for them in an office. That way you help them. Instead of going out okay. to uh, go in the sun and all that, they are in the office relax and it motivates them to work more you know the hours they spend outside now they will use it to for productivity and um, to progress the company uh, i think that way you motivate them thank you thank you that, that was a very good thank answer you. that's exactly what it is because uh some of these uh problem issues can be solved usually when you do that, the employees will, you know, they will do more job. They will, they will work, work hard. And, you know, if it's uh, in the production or sales, they'll be able to produce more. Next. So, hello. I think, go back. Okay. So, this area, um, what I want us to discuss here, how can we determine what motivates an employee? Is, this should be done in an individual basis, like I said earlier on. Then you create a strategy that provides an environment that allowing those employees to satisfy their personal needs and goals. You can also find out what is most important thing they want in their job. One employee may want an autonomy and another want freedom. Another wants to get involved, involvement what is going on in the organization and input and another might be want responsibility and growth okay i will i will i will share this uh, example for you with you so when i finished my mba i was working for a car rental company so when i finished so i need my i need more responsibility so I went to my district manager. As at that time, I was a manager. I went to my district manager and talked to him and said, yeah, I finished my MBA and uh, I want more responsibility. So the reason why I'm doing that, you know, when I finished my MBA, I was thinking that what I was doing is not, en is, is very, is not enough for somebody with an MBA. So I need more responsibility. So when I went to him, and he created a, a, you know, a different responsibility for me, adding to what I, I was uh, doing before and um, and that really makes me happy because i was able to get what i want and i was was able to do that for me so creating an environment where an employer can get involved involved in the what is going on you know have a freedom it depends on what the person wants that's makes them feel you know in, in enjoying the company they are working for can you do another slide? So, how to motivate employees? There are two ways to motivate them. So, organizational managers who want to encourage productivity should work to ensure that employees, one, feel that the work they do has meaning or importance to the organization. They also believe that good work is rewarded. If an employee comes in, work hard, you know, at the end of the year, he didn't get uh, raised or you know, get promoted, he will feel bad. Or if you work hard and another person get promoted, he's not, he was not promoted, so that's the, you know, he wouldn't feel, he wouldn't feel good. So to do so, you need to make sure you, what you're doing for Mr. A, you do the same thing, and you have a policy that recognizes individuals that work really hard. You also believe that they are treated fairly. So if Mr. A works hard, 
during the annual after the annual appraisal he was not promoted and somebody else was promoted that employee will not feel good you don't feel okay he will not stop working hard or maybe try to leave his job or her job so it's one you need to treat them fairly make sure the work good job they're done are rewarded sometimes some managers when when an employee do a do a good job they recommend them they praise them you know i remember one time i went to i went to a competition with some of my my students went to florida with the uh, Decker, which is a distribution academy uh, clubs of America. We went there and we worked out. So when we came back, my the provost of my school, he gave me he, he sent me a reading note. That makes me feel that uh, yes, this job I did was good. You know, they, they recognized me for taking those students who came out from uh, organizational leadership. So that really makes me feel as if you know I belong to the organization and. Uh, they recognize me so it makes me to keep working hard so that should be the same to um in any organization sometimes some managers if you do something good they will, they will not recognize you but when you do something bad they will write you a memo so that's not okay too so but right when you do something wrong and when you do something wrong they also should be recommended as well next okay um everyone okay so how can motivation improve job performance any ideas can uh, somebody share with me what have what 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 you know about how can we motivation improve job performance who want to share again can we try uh swati we did it we missed it after. yes uh, okay dr ken I can hear you. Okay, we can listen to you. There is no issue. Is there any issue? Sure, in this? go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Smareki? Yes. Yeah, you can move ahead. The next slide. No, 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 no. I've not finished this one. I need to go through this. No, no, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you so much. So, by using the yeah. motivation, employees bring to with them to their workplace, we can use it to improve and increase job performance. Organizational managers should understand that it is difficult to change people. It is possible to use the motivation to change employees' behavior and improve their job performance. Organizational managers should also direct and ask their employees what is important to them. Can you move a little bit? Is it okay, sir? Yeah. So let's talk about this expectancy theory. This is the connection which employees expect between effort and reward. If an employee does a very well and puts forth additional efforts, they will likely expect to be rewarded accordingly so how many of you there who works really hard that expect their, their managers or supervisors to reward them that didn't get rewarded anyone please be be honest if you do if you do a good job and you expect your employer to reward you and you didn't get rewarded is anyone here that experienced that anyone so what I'm trying to get at, if you did a good job and you're not rewarded, you feel you feel bad because nobody recognizes the effort you put forth and not been able to reward. So you won't feel that that will make you demoralize you. You won't be able to work hard again. But if you work hard and you're rewarded, that keeps you going. So in a, in a retail setting, for example, if a cashier might offer to work a double shift when a manager is short-staffed but would expect a raise and perhaps additional compensation for doing so. 
So let me ask somebody here. Um, Mary Jane, are you there? Is Mary Jane there? I know she's uh, an HR manager. Mary Jane, are you still there? Mary Jane. Mary Jane. Maybe she's not there. Miss so Mary Jane. Is she there? No, no, sir. She is not responding. Okay. So who, who, who is an H, HR manager here? Is anyone here? Yeah. Okay. What's, what's your name? Kaustub Agarwal. Okay. Thank you. So let me ask you put this question for you. So yeah, please. Yeah. When you when you which company do you work for? What kind of company do you work for? Yeah, I head the HR for a company called Troika Pharmaceutical. Okay. Thank you. So if you have a if you if you are short staff and mm -hmm. you need somebody to work double shift or over time, you know. So what do you do? How do you pick up that that particular staff to work double shift? What do you do? What do you look at? Okay, uh, we look at two things when we are uh, giving an extra compensation. Number one is the extra hours of work that he has worked, so the extra duty. And second is when he is working for an extra number of hours, what kind of work that he picks up? Is he doing the same job that he is doing or he is also taking over some other work for which we are uh, uh, having less staff? Mm -hmm. So wherein we are short staff, there are certain other duties also that the person may be willing to perform. And if he performs that. So there are two things. Number one is the regular compensation is given extra or there are incentives which we give if there are a stretch work, stretch performances given by the people. Okay, thank you. Do you have another HR person here? Any other HR manager here who can share his own ideas or anyone okay so this is exactly what you do um i remember when i when i own my own business i ran i ran a, a current two business for 11 years while i was doing my phd so i have uh, employees that uh, are really sound you know working hard do everything so when i look at those ones that's the ones i pick up to over some shift so i know that uh, all employees are not the same but there are some you know good ones that will can will do any other any type of job you, you give them so that's what i look at those ones that can do the job it seems like uh, mrs J mary jane is back here is she there are you there yeah she just uh said in the chat box that she's having some network difficulties oh okay i'm so sorry i'm so i'm so sorry so the expertise theory is means that you have a connection between employee effort and reward when an employee does a very well good effort additional effort they will expect you to be rewarded accordingly if you don't reward them that will send them that will that will, that will not They'll, they'll feel not, they'll feel bad they will not they'll feel bad and they will not be able to work hard so the more if you want an employee to work hard you need to watch what they're doing i need to also try to reward them in a one way or the other form even if you don't have any monetary compensation you can also write a note you can also you know give them um give them gifts whatever you whatever you you know you have so in a retail setting a cashier might work offer to work a double shift when the manager is your staff but that staff is best to get a raise and perhaps additional compensation so working is working an additional shift does not you know some companies does not make you get a raise but it can help if you do it more often you know from within the year they perhaps you can get a good uh, compensation your next So, expectancy theory also that the employees who do not feel rewarded becomes un unmotivated. And then there will, there, there will be a setback in their performance. They also think how you might feel if you're in their shoes. You work so hard, never receive any additional 
cognition or communication. You know, it's it just naturally as a human being, if you do something right, people need to give you a pat in the back and say, hey, you did a good job today. If they don't get that such a thing, then they'll be feel unmotivated. You also, as a manager, you would, would you continue to work hard, as hard as possible, or you would think that, you know, why bother? You know, if, if nobody cares for you, that you work hard, nobody cares about what you did. That means they are not recognizing your job or your effort you put. Okay, next. Okay, I think you move back, you move back, go back to a little bit, one more. Okay, so in the conclusion, I will expect that employers should discover the extra ordinary needs applicants have before they hire them. So we can do this during the interview. That's the reason why interview is a very, a very good time for you as a manager to discuss your input your potential applicant to know what what they you know what what they want in it in their job so by so doing you'll be able to get it that's an information finding you know not exactly what they need and during that time you can have it on their file so when when you are trying to motivate that that's the same things you can do before and 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 no applicants can satisfy those needs if you're not able to satisfy those needs then yeah, that means that person is not a good hire for you. Employers should also place their employees in a role that will allow them to use their ability and make progress towards the realization of those personal goals. Okay. However, organizational managers should commence by supporting employees' needs with organizational objectives if such commitments is expected. They also need to um, have certain organizational motivational theories can play a significant role in guiding and organizational managers through the employee motivation process. This will ensure that they do adopt effective motivational approach that can be can bear a positive result. I would like to share one more thing here with you guys. Um, so very, very often times, people co are confused with idea of happy employees with motivated employees. These are two things are related, but motivation actually describes the level of desire employees feel to perform, regardless of the level of the happiness. Employees who are adequately motivated to perform will be more productive, more engaged, and feel more invested in their job. When employee feels these things, it helps them, and thereby that their manager be more successful. So, and that's all I have, and I would like to take some questions from anybody. So let's do the Q&A. Any questions, you can type it or, you know, can raise up and ask, then I'll answer you. So, um, while you were presenting, Abhipsa messaged and she wants to ask you a question. Uh, Abhipsa, sure. please go ahead. Unmute yourself and ask the question to sir. Yes, thank you, Smariki, ma'am. Uh, it was nice listening to Mr. Kenny Chukwa and I am very, uh, that is, I am feeling very privileged and very, uh, that is, uh, happy also, same time, to know many things about uh, employee motivation and how the organization should go for motivating employees. Even I also teach motivation and I am a, uh, that is, a, uh, OB faculty. So, mm -hmm. I want to know, sir, sir, in the present time, sir, you have told uh, that is a link, uh, that is uh, or the relevance of the expectancy theory in the practical field. Sir, my question is related to this theory only. 
so i want to know that uh, that is whenever that is uh, that many times an employee feels that uh, there is no uh, positive relationship or uh, that is he feels that uh, whatever effort he has put in he is not getting the same uh, uh, that is the same uh, kind of uh, reward in return but uh, that is and he feels demotivated sir uh, that is and he may not uh, he may not uh, uh, able to continue with the same level of effort or he may lose or he may reduce his productivity level it may happen but uh, sir uh, my question is that what if if uh, he does not have any uh, that is uh, alternative opportunities outside and uh, he is he has to work and he has to maintain his livelihood uh, that is uh, for his family and uh, in the organization so he has to be there in the organization and though his motivation level is low but he continues with his same level of productivity and same level of effort and just uh, we can also relate it in the present time that is in the covid 19 situation also we are putting in much more effort but expecting uh, but it is expecting also equal or more uh, in return but still the reward uh, that is it cannot be proportionate to our effort but uh, similarly is the case sir i think sir you are getting my question sir so what yeah. will be the yeah sir yeah, the, the answer uh, should be um, is the manager is supposed to observe that find out if that if they are, if the employee is not motivated so is there is the duty of the manager to uh, figure out another way to motivate that employee because they are employee you need to know them and, and know, observe them and know when they are performing and when their uh, morality is low because of uh, not been able to motivate them so when you find out then they, either, you know you can have a meeting with the, the employee and find out why is the, um, the performance lower than what it was before so that, that way then you can decide what you can do to motivate that employee and, and you know, so as a manager, you are more you are responsible for doing that, and that's the only way you can be able to um, keep keep that employee work going. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, sir. You're welcome. So, more, more questions. So, another question is from Mr. Pratik Omkar. He is asking motivation in terms of reward is used based on favoritism these days. So please comment on that. Okay, that that, that, is, that is true. You know because you use favoritism. Favoritism is not a good thing to use in an organization if you want to move your organization forward. Because if you try to motivate some people you like or those who it does not like, that will affect the productivity and also but the performance. And that's why, you know, as a manager, you need to be fair. And many times, where you know, some managers are not. So, if, if you want the organization to go move forward and uh, succeed in the objective, you need to be fair to other um, other employees. You treat the same employees, treat them as you treat you know others. If you don't do that, then you are creating a trouble, a problem for the organization. And that will reduce their performance. And probably as a manager, it will affect you because if you're not performing, your boss will not like you, you, you know, might decide to take your job away from you. Thank you. Uh, sir, Mr. Guru Bandhu is saying that uh, though we have discussed a lot about the textbook concepts and theories, he would want you to please share some uh, international practices uh, adopted by the top Fortune 500 organizations in modern era that are the secret of their success. Can you repeat? Sir, Mr. Guru Bandhu is saying that we have discussed a lot about uh, the textbook concepts and theories. So he would uh, request you to please share some international practices which uh, are adopted by the top Fortune 500 organizations in modern era that are the secret of their success. Okay, um, what I can say that uh, to answer that, I have a. I live here in Minnesota State, and uh, we have a uh, 3M, which is an inter uh, Fortune 500. We have a uh, Best Buy. This is their. All of them are this is their headquarters. We also have Target. So I'm very close to um, 3M. So what what they, what 3M what what they have what they have done is they, they look at the performance of the employees and the managers also observe them 
they, 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 they try to treat everybody fairly. And if you look at uh, 3M, it's one is the biggest, one of the biggest com Fortune 500 companies in the world today. They are everywhere. So that's, that's exactly what they do. I have a friend that works there as a, a director of operations. So what they do, they treat everybody equal. They are fairly treated everybody and no, no complaints. So whatever they, they motivate their employees the same way like they do with others. So they don't have any secret, they just like treating everybody the same. That is the way they succeed. Right, sir. So uh, here, Miss Rupali Paikre wants to ask you something. Rupali, please go ahead. Unmute yourself and ask. Put forward sure, your sure. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, is my voice is audible? Uh, yes, Rupali. Okay. okay. Uh, yes, sir. So good to listen, you, sir. Yes. 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 And those who are having job, they are they are also having some less number of salary at this time. So, what is your perspective on this, sir? Yeah, I didn't get the question very well. Can you repeat? It's kind of very noisy. Can you repeat? Okay, sir. My first question is, how motivation works for you in your life? And my second question is. Is this motivation really work in this pandemic? Because many of the people are losing their job, and at the second time, those who are having job, they are having some less number of salary also at the same point of time. So, what is your perspective on this 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 particular time period? Okay, motivation work, works. You know, to me, my motivation is, um, and I see this COVID, COVID. I have been able to teach from home, you know, I, I'm not going to come, I just don't want to teach. So that's a motivation for my university to allow me to go and teach from home. Also, provide me with other things I need to teach from home, you know. I, I have a laptop, I have a tablet, and also have a Zoom account to provide for me. So that's a motivation for me to, you know, during this pandemic. So it's still working. It's still working for me. I see it as a motivation. There's a lot of a lot of people that doesn't have that opportunity to work from home or you know uh, have those uh, tools to work from home. Thank you. Um, sir, another question here is from uh, Mr. Banaj Khatua. He is asking. I think motivated employees takes more responsibility. So motivation and responsibility are two sides of a coin. Is it true, sir? Can you repeat? So he is asking whether motivation and responsibility are two sides of a coin. He thinks that yes. employees take more responsibility. Yeah, giving you more responsibility means that uh, employee, your employer sees you as somebody who can perform the job. So just like myself, when I finish my MBA, so I asked for another responsibility. So they give it to me. They were able to do that for me because they feel that I can perform. So I say motivation for me to get, you know, to next, to get to learn another kind of job. Thank you. Yes, sir. So another question by Mr. Costa Bagarwal. He is asking, nowadays most employees work remotely due to COVID. What are the novel approaches that HR professionals take to keep employees motivated in such scenarios? Okay, because the first place allowing you to work remotely is the motivation. You have your job. Then there's a lot of people that today that their company closed, they cannot work remotely. They close their job and say, okay, you need to go and we'll come back. We'll come back. So allowing you to work from remotely is the motivation in the one place. So providing you those those uh, tools you can use is another motivation as well. So that's why I see it 
and it's just exactly the same thing with me, you know, being able to work from my home. So like today, you know, we have the meetings and everything we're doing we'll do from, from here, you know, just a motivation. And also provide all the skills we need, all the things we need to, like the tools to work from home. Okay? Can you right. get another one? Uh, so another question here is from, from Ms. Somishri Mahanti. She is asking um, how important for an HR person or a line manager to deploy work life balance in the organization and to what extent for employees to keep motivated? Can you repeat? Uh, she is asking how important for an HR person or line manager to deploy work life balance in the organization. Then as, and as an HR manager, you, you know, you, as an HR manager, you need to have a policy from your company, what you, what you guys can do. And, and that's what you follow to be able to do that. Because you cannot use your own uh, policy. You need to have a organizational policy to direct you on that effort. Thanks, sir. Sir, um, Mr. Guru Bandhu is saying that uh, we mostly are, we, we are talking about individual motivation. So, can we know for the organization motivation as a whole? Individual, individual motivation works better because you, when you know some, when you decide what motivates somebody, then you can use that or provide that particular person an opportunity to achieve that particular needs once in that area. So. Uh, here I can see another question. It says, it is from Anita, Miss Anita Botani. She is saying, Doctor, in a multinational organization, to what extent can the HR manager exert his discretion in rewarding an employee for his or her extra efforts? Yeah, in that in that area, just like uh, giving employee empowerment. So as an HR HR manager, you you must have such empowerment. So, beyond the uh, call of duty to motivate employee depending on how your organization works a lot a lot of times you you use your own personal you know personal resources to motivate an employee if it's not available in your organization you can go about doing that thank you okay sir so another question is from miss somashri mahanti she is asking how is motivation level different for government and private organization employees is it due to the job security work timeliness alliances or any other references you can share to explain yeah in our private organization you know for me when i when i own my business i job security is one of them and i look at their performance as well so it depends on what the private organization have is for their HR managers to use, what kind of tools they have for them to use to motivate other employees. But for me, as an, a private uh, business owner, I usually use what I think basically, you know, needed for the employee. Usually, sometimes I, you know, if like a student working for me, I can pay their tuition for them. I can also buy books for them. There's ways I can, you know, use to motivate my employees when I work, have my own business. Thank you. Uh, so uh, this question is from my side. I uh, completed my doctoral degree in the subject of happiness. So while presenting, uh, you talked about motivation and happiness, and you said that you know there can be situations wherein people can be motivated but still not happy, or the other way around also. People can be you know happy but still not motivated. Yes. So how do so, we look at that? Okay. Um. There's two. These are two things. They are related. Happy, happy, happy employee, and motivation. Okay. The way I see it, if you have a, a happy employee, then I saw this, this is a little equation I have. I created when I did, um, when I had my business, uh, small business. Happy employee plus happy customer equals to profit. Because when your employees are happy, they will tend to 
serve your customers well and when your customers are well served then you're increasing your your organizational performance and also that leads to profitability right sir so as you mentioned they're interrelated yes okay sir uh sir there's another question uh from uh, doctor uh, from mr guru bandhu he is asking please explain recent trends of performance and motivation measurement tools or techniques if any okay can you repeat the question again uh, sir he is asking can you please explain the recent trends of performance and motivation measurement tools or techniques he is referring to tools and techniques of performance and motivation measurement okay the te techniques you can use to establish such depends on what the organization have for the organizational managers you can also use your own techniques create your own techniques because this way people are you know going out outside the box to create um, motivation for their employees one to making sure you acknowledge your employees plus six you also make sure you offer them different choices making sure is not one a particular way to you know motivate them you're gonna so encourage them to use their initials if you look at apple apple today the reason why they are they are they are they are one of the top companies in the world is because of the way they motivate their employees um microsoft did the same thing as well so in micro in apple they have a team that comes in their job is to come in and create a new product and when they're so doing they, they if those products sells those teams that get share of that particular product they get percentage so that's how they have a team that comes together and bring out initiatives what they what they can do produce so that's why you see them every year they're coming up with a different iphone and all that thank you uh, sir, another question is from uh, Ms. Somishri. She is asking that uh, whether uh, an employee leaves the organization only because he is not motivated or there can be any other reason behind that. Can you repeat again? Sir, Ms. Somishri is asking, sir, if em employees leave organization because they are not motivated in all terms or anything else? Yes, there are many things you can, the reason why employees leave is not, uh, it, sometimes it could be motivation. And sometimes it could be a type of manager you are working for. Actually, my my dissertation was on jobs um, job satisfaction because what informed my uh, dissertation when I owned my off when I owned my business I, I was located in a hotel. So every three months I see employees leaving. I see new employees, and then when I ask them, they said they don't know. So I decided to do, do my dissertation on job satisfaction. Then I find out that the reason why they're leaving is because of the way their managers treat them and not motivation. You might give them a very good motivation. If your manager doesn't treat you well, guess what? You'll not, you'll not be there. You want to feel welcomed. You want to feel as see whatever you do is recognized. So that's exactly what people leave their jobs. Not because of motivation. Because of the people they are working for, so you know, in some in certain organizations, you need to have be a kind of a transformational leader to be able to work with those uh, employees. Because if you don't uh, work with your employees, you don't inspire them, you don't motivate them, probably they're gonna leave. So, right, so I, I think uh, this uh, uh, the concept that you explained right now is when we say that uh, people generally do not leave their uh, organizations but they leave their bosses because exactly. the, yeah. yes because their bosses are at, at once causing them because even if I even if I motivate you give you everything you need but you have a very bad money a very bad manager or you know general manager right sir. You yeah you, you will not be able to work with the person right sir so yeah. another mm -hmm. question uh, is from your friend uh, professor das he's asking 
what kind of employee engagement strategy and organization needs to adopt to make employee motivated there are, there are many ways you can do that one of the ways you can get the employees motivated huh. like I said, what, what employee engagement strategies uh, you can think of strategy one like uh, what i explained here before that you need to when you are hiring employees you need to understand them first what motivates them before before you can employ them so this will help you to know on time before they are working for you a lot of times we work you hire people you don't know what they need you don't know what they want to achieve a lot of people want to they, they make money but sometimes they're looking for they go out and go to school or whatever so when you have those uh, motiv um, employee hiring strategies that help them understand those employees they are hiring instead of hiring somebody that is not uh, a match to the position you are hiring so that's exactly the kind of strategy you can use a lot of our uh, you know like we did uh, hiring last last this june last june so the professor we hired he comes in we ask him all the questions we, we try to know exactly what what is he looking for what is why is what is he trying to, why is he trying to be in five years so getting all this information will help you hire those persons so he's not a match to that position particular position you're hiring then we you know we, we won't be able to offer him the job but the guy we hired now because we are looking for somebody who want to be in our committee to serve as an accreditation a consultant so that's exactly he for, for that during the interview thank you sir so that means that uh, you know motivation uh, doesn't start after you know entering an organization it starts right from the talent acquisition step correct that's why it starts because when you know them those questions you ask them remember an interview is not about um information gathering when you talk to those those uh the questions, questions you can ask them they get be able to get those information from them and then you know that this person is a fit or not so that's why you can use that and be able to offer them the job that's exactly what it goes from there. Right, sir. So we have talked about theories of motivation and that uh, the need for motivation, the importance of motivation. But the fundamental question now comes to my mind is how do we know what motivates what uh, you know which individual? How do we study? Because there are a lot of individuals in an organization, and we need to cater them all. So how do we have a you know a, a policy or a strategy that works for all? Yeah, that you know what you can do. Remember, each of these employees, they have a they have a departmental health head. It's the responsibility of those managers, those sub managers, to gather those information and then offer it to the um, the, to the organization. I'll share an example with you right now. We are thinking at my school. We are thinking about going back to school online. A lot of us, uh, the the management, want us to do come in person. So we are saying that some faculty were saying that if we go in person, if that person contracts um, COVID-19, that's not going to work for us. So our union, I just did a, they have a survey for us, ask us how do we want to go back in the fall? So we, you can do the same thing in your organization or the, your subheading or subunit. Gather those information from your employees, what motivates them, what did they want, what are they looking for? Then you can use that to create a uh, work mock that works for every organization. Just right. like a survey you can take, yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, when we talk about motivation, we have very uh, different factors that also influences motivation. A person may be motivated, as we discussed, and uh, still not happy. So there can be other reasons also because of which, you know, even if we are trying to motivate an individual, he's still not motivated. You're doing everything, giving him uh, monetary rewards. You're trying intrinsic motivation methods, extrinsic motivation methods, but he's still not motivated. What to do in that case? <laughs> that, that, that's a very bad one because if you have all this in, in place, it's not motivated. There is no way you can, if you do all this, there's no way you cannot be motivated because you have tried to get information from you, what works. There's no way you cannot get him motivated unless he's not a human being. So if you do all this, I'm sure you'll be able to get him motivated. Uh, so because and, we have seen... And, 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 again, and again, there are a few things why people work. One, you want to get the reason why, particularly here in the, in the United States, 
we go to work here one to make money to get uh, you know, health, health insurance and you know get promoted take care of our families so if you are doing all these things for them and you're still not motivated i think probably he doesn't want to get he doesn't want to get motivated because you have done all you can do because you cannot do more than you're supposed to do you're motivated you do. if you're doing the same thing and you're working for every other person and doesn't work for that person then it must be different right sir uh, so while uh, we were talking about the current pandemic situation covid 19 and you explained us that uh, to keep people motivated uh, during this uh, you know challenging time uh, you are allowed uh, to work from home that is the mm -hmm. remote work except remote work what other methods can be adopted in the current situation okay, okay. there are many other ways can you know it depends on people as we, we have uh, as, as a teacher now we have a hybrid you know you can work face you can also do online so these are the things you can do because if you have trying to ha allow somebody to come over to come to your office and maybe get contracted in the the uh, the covid then that will that's risky so the organization you need to have a a rule or regulation what they can do the employee need to abide by that so either you come to work or you don't come to work or you lose your job so which one do you prefer so that's exactly why they use those have you to work remotely which is allows you you stay at your home you're not leaving one you're not spending money for transportation you're not spending money for parking so that's exactly what it is Right, sir. So these were the questions for uh, the session today. Uh, we are really thankful to you, sir, that you accepted our uh, invitation and uh, you were kind enough to you know come and uh, talk to our participants and give them uh, such beautiful deliberation and examples. I'm sure uh, there'll be uh, you know there there is a lot of value addition after your session. We will uh, share your quiz uh, with them, the the file that you shared with us. Anything okay. Would like to you know say before concluding sir okay thank you so much and uh, if any of them need to you know have more questions because sometimes when you get back home you remember something you can still ask me you can pass it to professor smorita carry and uh dr dash they can get it to me i'll be able to answer you and uh -huh. then they have the quiz you can share them with the quiz that takes about 10 minutes or five minutes and then i'll see dr Ken, uh, Dr. Ken, we have yes, already sir. sent them the quiz link. They have okay, yes, you can send link. Link. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, no problem. And they share with me when do you are going to Yes. Do they need to respond now? So what? Do they need to respond now to the quiz? Uh, no, when, when, yeah, it's, it's better for them to do it right now because it's on their head right now what we discussed. So before they forget it. So just okay. give it to them right now. Yeah. But they They will... Uh, Yes, they will respond to quiz. I will send you all the responses. Okay, and when I when I look at it, I'll give you a feedback too. And uh, thank you for having me. Pardon? Thank you, thank you Dr. Pennett. Yeah. Uh, we'll yeah. share the link with them now. They'll be answering those questions. And yes. Dr. Das will be forwarding you the answers, the responses. And then you may uh, please share your, uh, you know, uh, yes, I will yes, share with you guys when I'm, when I'm done. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. You're welcome, sir. Uh, you people have already received the link from Dr. Das. That is a quiz given by Dr. Kenneth on today's session. I request you all to please, uh, you know, give your responses now within 10 minutes. Once you all submit your responses, you will be sharing those responses with uh, Dr. Kenick and he'll be giving his views on that. Please, all the participants, I request all the participants to please give their responses. Dr. Das, would you want to say anything? Would you want to share anything? No, that's okay. Because already we have sub submitted the quiz link to them in their like, actualizing okay. the group. Then, yeah. then we can we can close now and they can share the responses. 
yeah yeah after this closing they can share the responses and one thing is that uh, please tell about the tomorrow session yeah tomorrow we have uh, at 3:30 to 5 same time we'll be having the session so we'll share the link tomorrow in the morning as we do for every other session please uh, you know uh, come prepared that's all and Thank tomorrow we'll be on compensation and benefits planning yeah by mr deepak gupta vice president hr tarvi stock broking yes okay thank you so much everybody i thank all the participants thank you very much bye bye